Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the United Methodist Church at Milltown this morning. I, I, mean, I am Pastor Dale, and I welcome all of you for joining our service, both in person and online. Um, as we begin our service this morning, I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Bar Barbara to lead us time of um, welcome and announcements. Good morning, everyone. Summer is here. Yay. <laughs> a little hot. Um, just a few things just to cover. Uh, Laura is not with us today because uh, Brian is, has his dance recital today. So good luck to Brian and all those who are dancing in his troupe today. Um, Janelle didn't want us to make a big deal out of the fact that she is moving. So please just read the best wishes that is on the back of the bulletin. Uh, she and her husband are moving to Washington, D.C., and we thank her for all the years of service she has um, given to our children within the Sunday School program. Scholarship applications uh, are on the table out here in the hallway. Uh, again, please get those into us uh, by the 29th, and uh, we have our committee meeting to uh, confer about them on June 7th, which is a Tuesday. The gardens, thank you to Carol Graham for all that she has done with the gardens, and hopefully today we'll get some put back together. Uh, I went and bought flowers last night, so uh, hopefully we can get some of those done uh, today. And today is our spring cleaning. I sent out the list uh, on via email. If you saw a project you would like to do, then we'll help you get to it. Um, whatever we can do today, we will do today, and we are feeding you at the end. Um, the lock-in is going to be on June 11th, followed by Education Sunday and Confirmation the next day. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I talked to Pastor Dale last night, and he is not going to have uh, confirmation practice on next Sunday, which is the 29th. So I don't think we'll have youth group as well. I didn't realize it was Memorial Weekend. And I know a lot of people aren't going to be around, so I will send out a, an email about that. But we will meet on June 5th. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. As far as service is concerned today, we are going to shorten the hymns. So uh, just listen for uh, what numbers I tell you that we're going to sing and how many verses we are going to sing of them uh, along the way. And we will not be having children's chat today. And I believe that is all of the announcements. Our accolade today was Sheila. Thank you, and please join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. Loving companion, you give your people visions, allowing us to believe in your words. We come to you today to keep our world, profess our love, and proclaim our faith. Nurture our hearts with your teachings and nurture our minds with your grace. In Jesus' name we pray and let us all say, Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 549, where charity and love prevail. Number 549, we will sing verse 1 and verse 6. Please stand if you are able. to worship found in your bulletin. We come together this day drawn by the light of God's love. In God's eternal realm, peace and hope reign. Let all the people praise God with their music and their voices. 
Let all the people praise God with their deeds of loving kindness. Praise, praise be to God. God. Amen. <laughs> Please join in our unison prayer found in your bulletin. Father, Abba, like generations before us, we have failed to keep your word and live in your ways. Your glory shines a light on our humanness and our ability to be faithless. Under the lights of your holy city, illuminate the path to your heavenly throne. Guide us by your spirit that we may receive the life-giving waters that flows from your heavenly home. Amen. Our hymn of illumination is number 128, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. Number 128, verse 1. <laughs> Should we, maybe they want to hear them sing yeah, first. Yeah, um, so in this call we'll have after the offering song, okay? So. It's um, really cool. Yeah. Uh, today we have special music for offering. Jamie, myself, and Mark, and Allah will play the special music. And as we move the time of the offering, let us uh, remember that our lives have been blessed by, you know, uh, flowing waters and harvest of fruits. Let us share our harvest with you and with the word of God. No. And let us get our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Amen.
Thank you. Please all rise as we sing the solid hymn number 95. Faithful God, thank you for keeping your promises to us. Take these gifts as signs of your promise. Keep ourselves completely into your care. Live without fear. We trust your love without reservation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated and uh, Sunday school will uh, dismiss for the Sunday school. And let us move the time of the prayers of the people. Please reach out to Jempinella and prayer warriors and also uh, church office to share any prayer requests and concerns or any praise report so that so to make sure any your requests are received and shared for. Uh, let us first lift up uh, the prayers of uh, Thanksgiving. Um, I have a praise report um, for Jamie. Uh, the, the annual conference will be starting tomorrow and Tuesday. And Jamie will be uh, ordained as a provisional you know, member of the United Methodist Church on Tuesday. And the service will be live streaming and at 11 in the morning on Tuesday. And you will see the schedule in your insert. Uh, and I also will uh, share the link through uh, email. So, and that's why she offered a special music uh, today. Um, thanks be to God. Amen. And we have um, church family members who are celebrating uh, birthdays and uh, special days this week. Uh, Lucas, uh, he's not here, but uh, please keep Lucas in your uh, prayer for uh, have a special day this week. Uh, Bar Barbara, so last kid is supposed to have a birthday this week on Earth, but I just got a phone call yesterday after the service, Saturday evening service, that she will be celebrating her birthday in heaven. So she will be, she just passed away yesterday. So please keep Barbara, so last kid in your prayer, we will keep you updated for uh, arrangements. So please keep. Barbara, in your prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Also, please keep. Um, is there any other in the celebrations that I'm missing here, Michelle? Thanks be to God. Any other uh, celebrations that you'd like to lift up? Okay. And the prayers of the petition, please keep uh, each name in your insert, in your prayer, who need healing and guidance and peace in their minds and body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Also keep, uh, continue to keep the people and the people, uh, the peace in the Ukraine, also family of Allah uh, for their safety. Lord, in your mercy. Also, please keep Elsie and Frank in your prayer. They are recovering from the COVID. So please keep Elsie and Frank Cherko in your prayer. Lord, in your mercy. We also have a prayer request of uh, yesterday uh, for individual named John who is waiting for the kidneys. So please keep 
uh, uh, the person named John in your prayer. Lord, in your mercy. And as we share that Steve and Tara lost uh, his father the, earlier this week and had a funeral service yesterday. So please keep Tara and Steve and all the entire family in your prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Any other prayer requests that you'd like to share with us this morning? Let us pray. Let us have a moment to lift up those uh, prayers and situations that we just shared. Father God, this week so many things have happened in our lives. Some of these things have been wonderful and caused our hearts and minds to rejoice. Other things have torn at our spirits, seeking to bring us down. Lift us up, Lord. Open our eyes to you. Help us to see your presence in all your world. Give us courage and strength for all the journeys ahead so that no power in the world will deter us from our destination. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us continue to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today can be found in your pew Bibles on page 190. We will be reading from Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Listen to the word of God. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a harlot whose name was Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, Behold, Certain men of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that have come to you who entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them, and she said, True men came to me, but I did not know where they came from. And when the gate was to be closed at dusk, the men went out. Where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. So the men pursued after them on the way to the Jordan as far as the fords, and as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and that all of the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. 
and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted, and there was no courage left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God is he who is God, in the heaven above and on earth beneath. Now then, swear to me by the Lord that as I have dealt kindly with you, you also will deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign. And save alive my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and deliver our lives from death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God is good. And all the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Let's take a moment to greet uh, each other and the person sitting next to you, saying, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all. We will be continuing our uh, sermon series, Hidden Figures. We will be talking about Rahab from the book of Joshua. And next week, we are also going to talk about uh, another uh, woman in the Bible named, uh, named Ruth. And next week, uh, Pastor Barbara will share God's words on Ruth. So this is wonderful opportunities to uh, listen God's words uh, from the Ruth from the past Barbara. So I encourage you to invite your family members and friends and members from the community not to miss this wonderful wonderful opportunities. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this morning that we all gather together as we hear and receive your words. Help us Bring your words into the center of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We like labels, you know, and they make life easier. If a jar or water bottle, you know, uh, says it's poison, a label as a poison, you know, it can quickly save my life. And if he says gluten-free, then it is safe for some people. So labels help us make quick and helpful decisions about certain things, and that is good and great. The problem is that we like to slap labels on people, or certain people. And we sometimes quickly label others and then behave according to our own understanding of that label. Attached to Rahab's name in today's passage in Joshua chapter 2 is the prostitute. And the prostitute was a label Rahab could never shake. We still remember Rahab as a prostitute. This is where many readers of this passage put a label of immorality on Rahab because the word the prostitute itself conveys negative meanings. And we like to act like it was a career choice by her own choice. But more often than not, many of women in that field, especially in the biblical times, are not there by choice. They are slaves mostly, victims or poor, and have little to no way of earning a life, earning a living as I shared last week when we talk about Tamar. That might be their own only available option and choice to earn some financial resources. Because we see her family in today's passage, including her father and mother and brothers and her sisters, uh, they are, 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 their families are still alive and living with them and living in the city. It is likely that Rahab has been forced into uh, prostitution for this field for economic reasons, for financial reasons, probably to pay off family debt and raising their, their, the whole entire family. So before we label Rahab a woman with no moral compass, let's consider this kind of context 
of the society, of the Bible, of the passage that leaves women in poverty with no other choice. However, the prostitute is not the only label on Rahab. We also find Rahab as an ancestor of Jesus Christ. As we scroll down, scroll through the long list of Jesus' lineage, Jesus' family tree, Jesus' uh, genealogy in the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. If you read Matthew chapter 1 verse 5, you will see the name uh, of uh, Rahab appeared. So both rebels, both prostitute and Jesus' ancestors seem contrary to each other and one another. But as we explore the story, we find that she is more than what we might assume her to be because of her stated profession. But she is actually the most intelligent and she is actually the most faithful person in, in this story, in this chapter. So we find, we find another re, uh, label on Rahab, the most intelligent and most faithful, faithful person in today's passage. So Joshua chapter 2 reports and starts, uh, reports that a couple of Israelites, uh, Israelite men and spies showed up to scope out the city of Jericho, which God told them to overtake in an upcoming battle. And they go to a, um, the, the, their primary job is spying, right? Their identity is supposed not to be um, aware by the people. But they, the first place they went and visit was the house of a prostitute. There might be some questions why, how this relates to their job as a spy, but they go to a prostitute's house near the entrance to the city to meet Rahab there. And she helps the man who come, who, who come to her door, lying about their you know, whereabouts to the king, and hiding and protecting them and sending them off, sending them off safely. And God honored this whole ordeal by saving her and her family in the battle and marrying her into the nation of Israel and bring her into the lineage of Jesus Christ. That's just some short summary of uh, today's passage and the story of Rahab. And if you, you know, read carefully the, the full entire story of Rahab, you will see where Rahab's wisdom and intelligence shine. The story reminds us that our assumptions about people based on the convenient uh, labels we attach to them do not always or even often define who and of what that person is capable. But Rahab is a hero of the faith. She was a heroine of the faith and Bible because she sets an example for us. She has more faith and she has more trust in God than the Israelites in this You see, uh, if you, uh, in, in the first chapter, which we didn't read of the, uh, the book of Joshua, God spoke directly to Joshua. And God told him that he would give them the land. He had promised to give him the land. That is the same promise that God had made to uh, Joshua's predecessor, which is Moses. Yet, Joshua still sent spies to make sure that Israel could win. And Moses actually did the same thing years earlier. At the time when, jo uh, when Moses sent the spies, Joshua himself had been one of the spies. And Joshua in today's passage repeated what he did, what he experienced. Well, while Joshua might have had his doubts, Rahab, on the other hand, had none. He had no doubts. She had no doubt. She had heard about God's power and God's favor for the Israelites. 
and she believed she was living in the Gentile land, Canaanites. She heard about God of Israel and she believed. And that belief drove her to risk her own life to commit treason to help the people of God. In the perspective of the citizens of Jericho, Rahab might be a liar or a traitor, right? But she risked herself, risked her life to help the people of God because she believed that, believed in the God of Israel. So my friends and brothers and sisters, when we talk about faith, faith that springs forth into action is the key and the very essence of our faith. Just knowing that God is God is not enough. Having faith just by our knowledge is not enough. When we come to a raging river that must be crossed, there is a difference between knowing that the bridge will hold us and stepping out on the bridge. There is a huge difference. The believers know the fact that, but the one who has a faith actually walks across the bridge. That's the faith, and that's what, we, that's what Rahab did. She believed, and she put her faith into action by helping the people of Israelites. That's what Rahab did, and that's why Rahab is also celebrated and recognized as righteous, according to the book of James, chapter 2, verse 25. By her action, James recognized her as a righteous person. And also, she is celebrated as a faithful person by the Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 31. So we see another labels on Rahab, righteous and faithful. For this reason, I believe God honored Rahab by making one of Jesus' ancestors. Amen. To my friends and my brothers and sisters, aren't you glad that Rahab is one of the grand Jesus, Jesus grandmothers? For this story of Jesus is not only his story, but it's her story too. And it's our story as well. God, in His grace, God can and will use anyone who is willing to be used. And God will use them in ways that will surprise us. No matter who you are, no matter where in society you find yourself, no matter what others say about you, no matter what labels you carry throughout your life and no matter what others say about you and no matter what you've done in the past willingly and unwillingly all it takes is faith bring our faith into action and a willingness to say yes to God and like Rahab let us find our place in the family of Jesus because we are all family of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for teaching us today and inspiring and encouraging us, us from the story of Rahab. Fill each of us with your spirit as we take our journey in faith of Jesus Christ and help us be righteous in our action and help us be faithful in our faithful journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At the end of service, we'll just stay put and those of us who are going to stay to help will figure out what we're going to do and where we're going to go and divide and conquer and we'll go from there. Our closing hymn is number 467, Trust and Obey. We'll sing verse 1 and 4. Please stand if you are able. Oh, my God. 
beloved of God, go to be a blessing. Bring the good news of forgiveness and healing to this hurting, lonely world. Bring hope to all, for God's love is poured out for all God's people. Go peace in both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And let us pass the peace of Jesus Christ. Peace be with you and peace be with you. Have a blessed the rest of the day and the week and we will see you all next week. And before we meet next week, uh, we have some jobs to do. Amen.